Hey friends, and welcome back to this series on how to find clients online. I am Elena Motonono and I help online language teachers and coaches move away from one-to-one -one classes so that they can build more sustainable businesses and rekindle their passion for language learning and language teaching, as well as find profitability in their online businesses. This is the series on how to find clients online and today is the last video in the series where I will share with you how I find high paying clients for my online coaching business. Now, I started teaching online in 2010 and at the time I was charging 10 to $15 an hour. At the time, because I knew very little about running a business or coaching, I felt like in order for you to increase how much you make per hour and consequently how much you make per month, you had to find a place somewhere online, some place that nobody knows of, where only rich people hang out. And these are the people that are going to pay you a lot of money for your services. Now, in the beginning, when I did not know that, I was quite disempowered by the thought that there's a secret place where rich people hang out that I can't find, or there are secret words that I can tell people and entice them into my offers. I felt so disempowered that I wasn't motivated enough to go and do my work, which means create value and share value and learn from failure and fail again and again and take action until I got results. Instead, I kept waiting and trying and tweaking and changing things around, which is not a good thing for your business. I changed things all the time, hoping that maybe if I say about this offer in this way, or maybe when I change the offer altogether, or maybe if I offer this to this audience, it's going to be magical. So today I created a doodle for you that shows to you three steps that I'm now using on a regular basis to attract high paying clients. And like I said, I am not creating anything that is super secret. All of the tips are really common and they're kind of almost too simplistic. But more of the work that I am doing today has to do with the emotional state that I'm in and it has to do with the thought level. The moment I moved away from disempowering to empowering thoughts, I started seeing results in how many people I worked with, whether one-on-one, -on -one, in private coaching or in group coaching programs or in my community. So with that, here are my three strategies that I use and how I work around my thinking and my emotions when I go out there and make offers and now offer packages that are way more expensive than they were in the beginning. And each of these strategies is represented here as a gift box because what I want what I get out of each of these steps is a lot of learning and growing. And if I'm not willing to pay the price for this gift, which sometimes is too high, and that's why not everybody gets to stay consistent with pursuing and getting closer and opening this gift, right? So each of these gifts has a price tag attached to it. And I will talk about the strategy because the strategy itself is really simple. But what makes it ineffective is your, our unwillingness to pay the price and to stay in the discomfort of this process. So step one uh, is what I usually do is I invite people for a free session. Some people call it a discovery call or a consultation, but it's a free session that I offer to online language teachers and uh, I have a process that I go through that uh, allows me to use certain tools 
to help give the person that is in a session certain insight about where they are in business and why they can't move forward. Now, there is a price tag attached to it. And it's this thought that if I ask people to come and spend time with me in a free session, discovery call, I will feel salesy or spammy, or people will think I'm salesy or spammy. And as a recovering people pleaser, it is a high price tag, but there's a lot of growth in this process. And you are actually able to show up and hear exactly from people where they are and connect with them. But in the beginning, when you're just making these efforts and some people will say yes, but actually will not show up for the session, and when you keep doing this, it will feel like you are maybe salesy or spammy and there will be a lot of fear and a lot of resistance and a lot of impatience with this process. But if you stick with it and if you're willing to reframe this price tag and you know take that, but instead of looking at yourself as salesy or spammy, you can actually look at yourself as somebody who's offering value then you will uncover a lot of growth. And this is your very best opportunity to grow as a marketer and to learn how to sell. No amount of courses will teach you how to sell than this process of inviting people into the one-on-one -on -one free sessions. Now the next step that for a long time I felt really uneasy about is actually making my offer. In the very beginning, because most of the people, most of my clients came through word of mouth, free sessions were a breeze. I had probably 99% conversion rate because the people that came were ready. They had been recommended by somebody and they came in and they were ready to work with me. So it really didn't matter. Um, it was just a matter of me showing to them how I can help them. Now, when I started inviting people into free sessions with me from my list or from Instagram or through my blog where people would just connect with me, um, through the website, that was a completely different business altogether. <laughs> because you are with this person for the first time, you're sitting down, you have no point of reference most of the time. Although today people that come into a free session will have followed me for a while or maybe will have read something that I had written or maybe listened to my podcast. But anyway, you have very little point of reference. And so you invite them, they show up and you tell them in the session after you use your strategies, I use my process of conducting a free session that again, kind of gives the person assessment of where they are. I tell them my coaching offer, I give them and I tell them this is what it's going to look like, this is how much it's going to cost. Would you like to work with me? Now, to get to this point, it takes a lot of courage. And in the past, I wanted to be really safe. And even when I knew that the person was sold, I would never sell in a coaching session because again, I felt it was salesy or spammy and I couldn't get over this, right? This price tag was too high. And then I also didn't want to deal with the yucky emotions of fear or shame when I asked for a sale. So I told people, well, I'm going to tell you in an email, like, let me follow up with an email and I will send you my catalog and my prices. And maybe in the beginning it was good, but over time, I think the great learning is happening when you are there one-on-one, -on -one, you're looking people in the face and you tell them, would you like to work with me? And you're dealing with your fear and you're dealing with your shame. And especially when you go back and watch the recording of the session, there is a lot of learning there. Now, if people say yes, that's great. But in the beginning, a lot of people will say no, and you will hear no over and over and over again. And the price tag here to unwrap this and to see it as a gift is detaching your worth from the outcome and deciding that 
the fact that people rejected your offer does not mean that they rejected you. So you're detaching your own worth from the outcome. It doesn't mean that you're inexperienced or unqualified. And you also sit with the discomfort of hearing your client's objections. Okay, when somebody tells you, well, I think it's too expensive, to learn how to help them overcome this hurdle, even in their mind, whether or not they're going to say yes to you. To learn to be unattached to the results even, to say to yourself that you are here to serve. Because if you become too clingy, then it's very unlikely you will sell. So there is a lot of learning here as well, and there's a high price tag. And once you go through the cycle and you hear no over and over and over and over again, 20 times, 30 times, however long it takes, going back into your free session and changing your attitude instead of going in and saying oh they will say no or they will say i'm salesy or spammy actually not to think what the person is about to say or to think not to try to please them but to show up willing and hopeful that is when you take do take two and actually go back in here but not everybody goes back and that's why very few people actually learn from this process. But if you're able to stick with it, and if you're able to find enough support, uh, whether you have a small group of online language teachers that are on board and they actually are in the same bind, right? They are taking risks and they're going out there. If you're able to get support like that, or maybe working with a coach, you will learn so much from this process that no other course will show you how to do. I hope you enjoyed this video and this entire series on how to find clients online. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, I invite you to do so and set your notifications so that every time a new video is released, you will hear from me. Also, I want to invite you right now to the event that I run every year. It's called the Online Teacher Summit. It's an opportunity for online language teachers and coaches to create the business that they want using what they already have. In the description, you will find the link to purchase the ticket and if you must invest into anything this year i encourage you to invest into the online teacher summit the focus this year is on creating content that connects and brings you clients and what a great way for you to continue learning and applying new insights into your business if watching YouTube videos would give you the insights that will help you achieve all of the results that you want, then we would probably all be watching YouTube videos and making a ton of money. That doesn't work like that because there is a lot of emotional investment and financial and time investment that is required if you want different results. So I want to invite you to join our three-day summit and see how it's going to change and impact your business.